evening. Welcome to worship at St. James Lutheran on this third weekend in Lent. Um, the cross and the cross of Christ thy glory. May the Holy Spirit, his, his ministry is to take the things of God and make them not just words or lyrics, but realities to our own spirits. May that happen with this song, with all the worship, and especially the word of God and the sacrament this evening. Welcome, Holy Spirit, and bless us tonight and in our Lenten worship. We make our beginning now in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Litany for Lent. O Christ, out of your fullness we have all received grace upon grace. You are our eternal hope. You are patient and full of mercy. You are generous to all who call upon you. Save us, Lord. O Christ, fountain of life and holiness, you have taken away our sins. On the cross, you were wounded for our transgressions and were bruised for our iniquities. Save us, Lord. O Christ, obedient unto death, source of all comfort, our life and our resurrection, our peace and reconciliation. Save us, Lord. O Christ, Savior of all who trust you, hope of all who die in you, and joy of all the saints. Save us, Lord. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. God of love, as in Jesus Christ you gave yourself to us, so may we give ourselves to you, living according to your holy will. Keep our feet firmly in the way where Christ leads us. Make our mouths speak the truth that Christ teaches us. Fill our bodies with the life that is Christ within us. In his holy name we pray. Amen. Daniel uh, knew that the nation had to break through spiritually and return to God with all their heart. Um, it's quoting the prophet Joel, so many of the prophets. Their message comes to us. We have a season every year, Lent, which is particularly focused on that. Then let's do it. Return to me with all your heart, says the Lord, with prayer and fasting, weeping and mourning, with broken and contrite hearts. For the Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Merciful Father, you sent your Son to save sinners, and I have sinned. I have failed to love, love even, even those closest, closest to me, me preferring that others serve me. I have neglected works of mercy, mercy as though disregard of others fulfilled my duty to them. them. I have resisted your word and the Holy Spirit's guidance of my heart, presuming that I know better. That I have been enticed by fallen desires, rebelling against you. O oh Lord, wash away, wash my, away sin, my sin, creating me a clean heart, heart and uphold me with a humble spirit which walks trustingly with you. you. How great is the mercy of God that we would sin and he would give his beloved son to die for it. But it is true. For the sake of him who died in our place, God does not count our sins against us. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please rise. The Old Testament reading for this evening is from Daniel, the ninth chapter. <coughs> in the first year of Darius, the son of Ahaza Eros, by descent a Mede, who was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, perceived in the books the number of years that according to the word of the Lord to Jeremiah the prophet must pass before the end of the desolation of Jerusalem, namely 70 years. Then I turned my face to the Lord God, seeking him in prayer and pleas for mercy 
with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. I prayed to the Lord my God and made confession saying, O Lord, the great and awesome God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments, we have sinned and done wrong and acted wickedly and rebelled, turning aside from your commandments and rules. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. To us, O Lord, belongs open shame to our kings, to our princes, and to our fathers, because we have sinned against you. To the Lord our God belong mercy and forgiveness, for we have rebelled against him and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God by walking in his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. Now therefore, O our God, listen to the prayer of your servant and to his pleas for mercy. And for your own sake, O Lord, make your face to shine upon your sanctuary, which is desolate. O my God, incline your ear and hear. Open your eyes and see our desolations and the city that is called by your name. For we do not present our pleas before you because of our righteousness, but because of your great mercy. O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, pay attention and act. Delay not for your own sake, O my God, because your city and your people are called by your name. While I was speaking and praying, confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel, and presenting my plea before the Lord my God for the holy hill of my God. While I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the first, came to me in swift flight at the time of the evening sacrifice. He made me understand, speaking with me and saying, O oh, Daniel, I have now come out to give you insight and understanding. At the beginning of your pleas for mercy, a word went out, and I have come to tell it to you, for you are greatly loved. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please rise to hear our Lord speak to us in the gospel. <clears throat> the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And he said to them, Which of you who has a friend will go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine has arrived on a journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within, Do not bother me. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, yet because of his impudence, he will rise and give him whatever he needs. And I tell you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And the one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be opened. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Let us pray. O Father, we know your ears are open to our prayers. We know your heart is open to your children. Now open our hearts to your will. By your word and spirit, teach us how to pray. To earnestly ask, seek, and knock. For everyone who asks, receives. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. He lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for our uh, next hymn. Um, this melody, this hymn may not be familiar to you. Uh, it's actually a very old hymn, um, but um, I think it's only recently made it into our hymn book. 
I happen to love it. I'm loving this hymn. So even if it's not familiar, try and sing it out and learn it. And um, This is not the only time we're going to hear it. Uh, but let's uh, sing, uh, entrust your days and burdens to God's most loving hand. <laughs> wide Christian growth emphasis called the being challenge. This coming week, the focus, the habit we're taking aim at is to prioritize prayer. Not prayer as an afterthought, but prayer as our OM, operational method. Now, does anyone really regard prayer that way? Yeah. I wonder if you know that if you happen to be on staff in this congregation, you have to come to prayer meeting every Friday morning at 8 a.m. Prayer is our OM. It's how we get things done. We ask God for his will. We ask him for his direction. And then we ask for his provision for the workers, the money, and especially the power of the Holy Spirit. And God answers. Coming soon, St. James Lutheran is going to have a family Easter walk around. Did you all see the thing on the side of the bulletin there? This is a tremendous opportunity to reach out with the gospel of Jesus to our community. And doing that is God's will for us. It, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. Uh, but there are just so many people and things that are needed in order for this to be successful, including good weather on April 3rd. Is good weather part of our prayer today, Jim? Good? Yes? Well, do you know what our priority for getting all that done is? It's prayer. It's prayer. It's our OM. God answers. And nothing beats that. 
Over the years as pastor, I have watched God break through in a lot of situations where people thought there's no way. Enormous barriers, towering obstacles, impossible situations. I've watched breakthroughs and I've experienced them in my own life, including very recently, not just my health. And you know what I've learned? Breakthroughs happen when you seek them. They don't just happen spontaneously. Breakthroughs don't happen for people who aren't looking for them. You get a breakthrough in your life when you seek a breakthrough from God. And the way you do that is through prayer. This evening, I want to teach how to pray a breakthrough prayer. What? Now, what does that mean exactly? A breakthrough is when God supernaturally intervenes, either in a relationship or a problem or a situation that you've been facing, often for a long, long time. I wonder if you've got anything like that in your life. I bet you do. And the model I'm going to use to teach this, the model is a man named Daniel. His book is in the Old Testament. His prayer life shows us the steps or the elements, the keys that need to be included when you pray a breakthrough prayer. Now, before we get into it, let me give you a little background on this Daniel. As a teenager, he was snatched by a foreign army and along with actually the the entire population of his country, Israel, the whole lot of them were taken into captivity far away in Babylon. The whole lot of them were refugees. And in that situation, Daniel got a job in the civil service of the Babylonians, the Babylonian government. And because of his faith, got promoted to positions of power and leadership. He was a real man of integrity. He kept on going and kept on growing until he was the second powerful, most powerful man in the empire. Though obviously in such a job, extremely busy. And also in such a job with cutthroat politics going on around him all the time. He was nevertheless a man of prayer. That is made clear when you read Daniel. It's actually the secret of his life. He's a man of prayer. He, he gets thrown to lions and all kinds of things. I mean, people in Washington wish they could throw each other to lions, but they can't. I mean, and the Babylonians did. Okay? It makes for a great story. And I want to encourage you to read the whole book of Daniel. But we're going to focus just on Daniel chapter 9 which is a breakthrough prayer of Daniel's given us in detail. Now Daniel had in his possession the scrolls of the Old Testament, at least the ones which had been written written up to that point. And from the scroll of Jeremiah, he knew the prophecy that Israel would be in Babylon a total of 70 years. But Daniel is super concerned. Why? Because the prophets also said that the reason Israel went into captivity in the first place was because of their sins and especially their refusing to repent and turn back in their hearts to God. Now this wasn't just a, you know, a religious theory or something that the pastor you know, gassed on about. <laughs> Daniel and the nation were actually experiencing what God had said they would if they didn't turn back to him. But here's the thing. Though they're actually experiencing captivity in Babylon because they hadn't repented. The thing is, in Babylon, they still weren't repentant. Not even after the disaster. Oh, they complained a lot about being in a foreign country. But turning back to God with all their heart, it had not happened. So how could God ever let the Israelites return to the Holy Land and rebuild the temple if they weren't first turning to God in their hearts? There needed to be a national breakthrough. And Daniel knew it. So what does he do? He prays for a breakthrough. How about you? Where do you need a breakthrough? In a relationship? Do you need a breakthrough in your finances or career? Do you feel like you're stuck? Maybe you need a breakthrough in your marriage or in the relationship with one of your kids. Maybe there's some habit you can't shake or hang up and you need a breakthrough if you're ever going to get out of it. 
Well, Daniel 9 shows us six key elements to include in any breakthrough prayer. How do you pray for God to intervene supernaturally in a problem, situation, or relationship? Here's the first key. And I don't know if you noticed in the bulletin, but I've got it laid out as a, the, the, the outline is laid out. You can fill in the blanks. Fill in the blanks. And here's the first one, the first key. Let God speak to you before you speak to him. Let God speak to you before you speak to him. Now, how do I let God speak to me? You get into God's word. In Daniel 9, verse 2, he writes, I, Daniel, perceived in the books, that means the scriptures, the Bible, the number of years that according to the word of the Lord to Jeremiah the prophet must pass. Quite honestly, you will never pray effectively until you study the scriptures. People want to think that's not true. It's definitely true. They impart to you the mind of God, and that is what empowers real prayer, especially knowing the promises that God has made. There's more than a thousand of them in the Bible. In John 15, verse 7, Jesus said, If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given you. Okay, so if I have been praying and I have not been seeing answers, I should check this, according to Jesus. I should check, number one, am I remaining in the Lord, staying connected? Possibly do I need to repent of some sins so I can be better connected to the Lord? And number two, are God's words remaining in me? Okay, how do I get God's words to remain in me? You read it. Don't say, as I've heard people say, oh, I read it years ago, I read the Bible. No, you read it all the time. Zach Zender had a great bit on this in the past week in the Being Challenge book. On day 14, he laid out the four R's of studying scripture. Read it, research it, remember it, reflect on it. Very good. Go back, look at day 14. You may say, I, I, I don't want to study scripture. I, I, I just want to break through prayer. Listen, there is a way that things work. This is true of practically everything. I'm looking at Ken here. Electrician by trade. You've got other trades as well. There's a, there's a way you can wire the house and there's a way you can't. There's a way that things work. Uh, and there's a way they don't. If you, if, you, if you go sailing, for example, there is a way you set your sails to the wind that works and there's a way that doesn't. It's true of lots and lots of things and it is true of breakthrough prayer. God has shown us in his word the way this works. So point one is Listen to God. Read the Bible before you talk to him. And here's the second key. Again, you can fill in the outline. Focus. Focus my attention on God. It's the next thing that Daniel did. It's the next verse in Daniel. Chapter 9, verse 3. It says, Then I turned my face to the Lord. This is a dramatic way of saying it. I turned my face to the Lord, seeking him by prayer. So his first step was listening, and now this, his second step was seeking. Seeking God diligently. Not just quickly poking your head around the door to see if he might be there, and then you move on. No. Not just a sweet little prayer, and then you're out. Seek him diligently. Jesus reiterated how central this is. He said in our gospel reading this evening, Seek, and you will find. The sense is, go on seeking. And in the next verse, he repeats himself, which for him is unusual. So the point must be very important. Jesus affirms, for the one who seeks, finds. Would you like God to help you, to bless you, to reward you in your business, or your finances, or with your marriage, or with your kids, or with something? Then turn your face toward him, and seek him, and go on seeking him. Seek him out in the area in which you need a breakthrough. But if you don't seek God, then you're out there on your own. If that's what you want, okay. If we don't seek him, God just backs off. Have it your way. Have it your way. I'm not going to intrude. But if we want a breakthrough, Jesus promised, seek and you will find. 
The third key, get your pencil out, begins with the word express. Express my desires with seriousness and emotion. Frankly, you can't seek God with all your heart without putting a little passion into it. If there's no passion in this, then you know what? Your heart isn't in it, and you don't really want it. That ain't the way that breakthrough prayer happens. There is a way that things work. 9 verse 3 says that Daniel sought God by prayer and please. He pleaded. That's emotion-charged prayer. Have you ever prayed like that? I bet you have. And the last time was when you were in deep pain. You pleaded with God. Why not pray that way when not in pain? It kind of depends on how much you want to break through. God would like to know how much you want this. You know, it, if it doesn't matter much to you, then the big supernatural intervention might not actually be appropriate for you. And verse 3 continues, saying that Daniel sought God with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. That showed his seriousness. I have found... You know, I used to be the mission exec in our district. You see, I used to go to a lot of churches. I have found that in congregations where not much kingdom of God stuff was going on, that it's a common sentiment among the members that fasting is only for people long ago or for kooks. Not so. I fast. Carol fasts. There's, there's two, well, maybe, maybe this proves it's only kooks do it. I don't know. <laughs> In the New Testament, Jesus just assumes that his disciples will fast. It turns out that your willingness to skip a meal or two or three not only focuses you on God in prayer, but also demonstrates that you're serious about the breakthrough that you seek. If you can't give up a grilled cheese sandwich for a little more focused prayer, maybe it's not that big a deal. The fourth key is remember who you're talking to. In 9 verse 4, Daniel began his prayer saying, O oh Lord, the great and awesome God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments. Your faith level is going to rise as you intentionally remember who God is. And if you need to flesh out words like great and like awesome, then just remember some of the miracles that God has done in the Bible. Say the exodus from Egypt. Or especially the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Remember too, his awesome goodness to you personally in the past. And also, um, previously in answers to your prayers. Remember how he's done that what he's done for you in the past. Faith rises as you remember that you're talking to the God who did all these things. Verse 2 of hymn 779 in our hymn book says, why don't I sing it? Thou art coming to a king, large petitions with thee bring. For his grace and power are such, none can ever ask too much. You're talking personally to a God who does breakthroughs. Remember that. Go forward. Point number five, very important this, humbly confess your sins to God. I know this is important because it takes up verses five to ten in Daniel's prayer. It takes up a lot of his prayer. See, God does not listen to prideful complaining. But he does listen to humble confessing. So confess your sins. You don't pretend that you deserve the breakthrough that you seek. You're throwing yourself on the mercy of God. And you want my advice? Then don't only confess the sins to him that you're already familiar with, but actually ask God, God, show me anything that might be between me and you. Show me stuff, sins in my life that maybe I'm not really paying attention to. I'll tell you something. That was a big part of my own prayer when I was recently in the hospital with COVID-19. And there was a breakthrough in my physical health, yes, but there was also a spiritual healing as God showed me and healed me in places of sin and unbelief. I wasn't really thinking that I had 
wasn't paying attention. He showed me, and he comes with grace. Confess your sins. Let God's mercy, supremely shown in Christ's cross, be your confidence as you request that he take an inventory of your soul. You don't have to do that with terror. You come to a merciful God with this. Humbly confess your sins to God. The last point, number six, is trust. Trust, trust God's concern for his own reputation. Hmm. You say his, his own reputation, his own reputation for what? His reputation for generosity and grace. This is God's character, and he wants it known that he's that way. Generous and gracious. It's one of his biggest motivations for giving you a breakthrough in answer to prayer. So depend on it. We see Daniel appealing to it. Uh, in verse 17, he prays, For your own sake, O Lord, make your face shine upon your sanctuary, which is desolate. For your own sake <laughs> means... For the sake of your own reputation. God wants to be known as the one who is gracious to sinners. So the appeal is God. If you answer this prayer. It will be known how good you are to people who don't deserve it. And I know you want that to be known. Also verse 18. He says. We do not present our pleas before you. Because of our righteousness. But because of your great mercy. In other words God. You have a reputation for great mercy. And we're appealing to that. Because you care about that reputation. You can also see it in verse 19. But we made the point. In our gospel reading. Jesus gives a terrific illustration of this. Let me retell the story he told in my own words. He says. A guy has an old friend drop in on him unexpectedly at midnight. Now back in the time when Jesus lived. With no phones and all that. Unexpected things going to happen. Here we know hours ahead. I'm running late. That didn't, okay. But the other thing was. In the Middle Eastern culture that Jesus lived in. Even at midnight. Hospitality had to be shown. Hospitality was and is a huge deal in the Middle East. We can, as Americans we can hardly imagine. Okay. Not showing hospitality would bring shame on the person not showing it, a shame that no one would want. So this guy has a friend arrive at midnight, but he's got nothing to put in front of him. For example, there's no bread, which is an absolute staple, especially in the Middle East. What does the guy do? He's got to do something. He steps out, slips across the street, bangs on the door of his neighbor, explaining his predicament. My old pal, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to him like his neighbor's coming to the bedroom window. My old pal has dropped in, and I've got nothing to give him. Please give me some bread. The urgency of the situation is something the neighbor is going to understand. Why? Because he's part of the same culture. You've got to be hospitable. When Jesus says, can you imagine that that neighbor is going to refuse him? Can you imagine that he would say, no, go away. I've already locked the door and my kids are asleep. Everyone in that culture listening to Jesus' story would say, there is no way that neighbor is going to refuse this request. It cannot be imagined. First of all, the excuses given are totally lame. What? I've locked the door and the kids are asleep? That's nothing. Unlock the door. And, and tiptoe around if you need to. Hospitality is at stake and that neighbor must give his friend bread. The other thing is, and everybody in that culture listening to Jesus would have been aware of this, but when he gets around the village the next morning that the neighbor did not help his friend with some bread for a guest, the reputation of that unsharing neighbor will be shot. Shame will be heaped upon his head. How could you not help out a friend who had to show hospitality to a surprise guest? You don't even deserve to live in this town. We are a hospitable village here. The man who is being asked to render some help at midnight knows that all this would happen. 
So for the sake of his own reputation, there's no way he's not going to honor the request of the guy seeking bread for his guest. Now, unfortunately, in the reading we have from the ESV translation, the translators were not too alive to this Middle Eastern cultural stuff. The footnote in the Concordia, or the Lutheran Study Bible is alive to it, but not this translation. There's a word that is used here. Uh, if you look at verse 8, it's impudence. It's the wrong translation, okay? Uh, verse 8, the end of verse 8 should read, yet because this guy here, the neighbor, yet because of his concern for shame that would come to him if he didn't help, he will rise and give him whatever he needs. Impudence is a misreading. So how does this apply? You and I are like the man who has his friend drop in very late. He's got to do something for him, but he's got nothing. He needs a breakthrough. Similarly, we have got big needs, desperate situations, things that have got to change. But we've got nothing, or not enough, to make it happen. We need a breakthrough. We don't go to the guy across the street. We seek God. And we seek him in prayer. And like the man across the street in the story, God is very concerned about his own reputation. And so will not give us a bunch of lame excuses instead of answering our prayer. God has a reputation for mercy. He has a reputation for grace, for generosity, for help, and well, for answering prayer. He stands behind the truth of his own word. And he does not want it to go through the village, as it were, that he's mean, harsh, or uncaring. He's full of grace. So, for his own sake, even though you are done deserving, he will answer your prayer. Jesus follows up his illustration, concluding, and I tell you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. These, then, are the six things that should be there in a breakthrough prayer. Daniel got his breakthrough, his answer, and you can read about it in verses 21 to 23, and after that, if you go on to read the book of Daniel. And likewise, you will see a breakthrough if you diligently seek God for it in prayer. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus for life everlasting. Amen. Together as a congregation, together with the church stretched around the world, confess our faith in the, using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, Pontius Pilate. Oops. was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. My apologies, my mind wandered thinking about my own sermon. That's not good. We continue now with the prayer of the church. Each petition will end, Lord, in your mercy. The congregation's response is, hear our prayer. So for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs, let us please kneel together in prayer. Merciful God, who invites us always to pray, keep our eyes fixed on you, that we would always be ready to receive your forgiveness and help in times of need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all, bless your church on earth, especially St. John's Lutheran in College Point. We thank you, our refuge and sure foundation in these troubled times, for for providing guidance to all the churches in our district 
as they adjust to worship schedules and methods of ministry that they're different from before, to provide spiritual nourishment through word and sacrament to those around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for the ministry of Ryan and Caitlin Howard among us. And we pray that you bless the Howard family as they prepare for the next chapter in their lives in your service. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O Lord, comfort the sick, the lonely, the oppressed, and those who mourn. Bless Barbara Fisher's friend, Nancy Matson, who suffered a stroke while recovering from cancer surgery. Bless all who mourn the passing of our beloved brother, John Eckberg, called home by our Lord on Thursday. And bless all those we now name before you, aloud in voice or in the silence of our hearts. Catherine, Rochelle. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord of all, bless us as we prepare for the family Easter walk around. Raise up volunteers to participate. Inspire those who will tell the story of your victory over sin and death. Bless us with good weather. And move our friends and neighbors to join us to hear your word. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Blessed Lord, grant that we who hear your word would treasure it in our hearts and minds. Hear our prayers for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us join together in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us. <clears throat> our, our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. Thy, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may remain in a posture of prayer. Um, Thinking about our offering, although we're not passing the plate at the moment, let's um, nevertheless prayer, pray an offering prayer. And then we'll continue with the confession and forgiveness. Merciful Father, we, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, us ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for some announcements. <clears throat> maybe I should explain, or maybe we know this backwards and forwards. In this service, because it is being recorded for the internet, we face this way more than we would normally do that. Because um, we've just noticed on, you can imagine why. Uh, also, uh, there is kind of a strong commitment to having the windows open. Um, so uh, you might want to be ready with a coat, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> because we live next door, she nips over without a coat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, announcement. We mentioned John Eckberg's passing in the prayer. Uh, I want you to know that visitation for John will be from 2 to 5 this Monday at St. James uh, Funeral Home, and that John's funeral service will take place here in the sanctuary at 10.30 Tuesday morning. Hmm. You can help fill orphan grain train containers headed for orphanages around the world and here in America. Shop online for underwear, socks, and towels to donate to the OGT warehouse in Pennsylvania. You can find complete details in the bulletin. Outreach Ministry is asking you to make up an Easter basket or two for needy children through Lighthouse Missions. The bulletin lists many of the items which uh, you may use to fill your baskets. Please join Boy Scout Troop 301's Fill That Truck Food Drive.
Fill that that's, truck. Fill that truck. That's on, I bet they're going to use a truck, don't you think? Uh, that will be on uh, the 21st, which is uh, two weeks from tomorrow here at the church. See the bulletins for items to donate, all of which will go directly to the Smithtown Emergency Food Pantry. Uh, please read the bulletin for details about the family Easter walk around, also referenced in the sermon and prayer. It will be held outside of the church from 10 to 2 on Sunday, April 3rd. I'm sorry, Saturday, April 3rd. That's the Saturday right before Easter. We need volunteers to participate. You can see Carol Middlestadt to volunteer. Ryan Howard's lurking in the back. You he can lurks. see him to volunteer. We need people to help. Ryan. Well, actually, just before the gym, we actually... Francamente, Spanish for frankly, we need the whole yeah. congregation to rise up and be in part, be involved in this mission. You know, if 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 you cannot be a watchman standing high on Zion's walls, you you can pray. We need people to pray. We we this is a tremendous opportunity. The Christmas one, God really, in, in spite of obstacles, God really blessed it. Really blessed it. And we think, we have reason to believe we're building on that and more people than ever. I know Christmas is not quite the big draw in people's hearts that Easter is, but it also isn't snow and ice, God willing, on April the 3rd. Uh, it's all right. He got that. That's yeah, yeah. okay. You get it. Did you, did you see in the thing here? St. James of the Church, the Lord has need of you. Um, the, the, there is, this is an opportunity like, frankly, how many years have I been a pastor? Since 1989, I, I don't know of a, I, 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 such a great opportunity as we have right now. I was a little dismayed because our COVID numbers in Suffolk County have flattened out, not going down the same way. Carol pointed out, that is going to make people more than ever come to an outdoor walk around. I'm not happy. I want the COVID numbers to go down. But I'm just saying, I think God is setting the table for a tremendous outreach. May the whole church arise and do something. Sign up at the back. Uh, yes. You're going to do uh, yard signs and, and yard signs. There's again. going to be put the sign on your yard. We can use more of that if you want to do a the yard sign or or hand out uh, postcards in your neighborhood to let people know about it. If you don't, even if you don't want to act in the thing, which was a lot of fun. Yeah. And narrating was fun. Some have the gift of hamming it up. Others don't. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> you should have seen the wife. <laughs> but please uh, sign up and back. Yeah. Ryan would like to say a word or two. As uh, Jim, thank you for praying for us uh, before. And uh, an email went out earlier this week. Last week, uh, I announced that I had received a call uh, to Lamb of God Lutheran Church down in Humble, Texas. Um, I'm here to say that I have accepted that call. And so... Uh, Caitlin and Asher and I will be moving to Texas. That is uh, the place where uh, my ministry will continue. And uh, we think that is where God is leading us. So I want to say, firstly, thank you to all of you for your words of support, for your prayers for us. Um, I really do feel as though uh, this is a God-led thing. And I know that your prayers uh, really helped in that regard. Please continue to pray for us. Pray for St. James Lutheran Church as well. Ministry is definitely going to continue. Here, uh, you know, the Easter walk around absolutely and, and beyond. You know, this church is going to make huge impacts in this community. Um, still going to be here uh, through Easter, uh, so we're not gone just yet. Um, I'm looking forward to, to talking with all of you over the next month. And uh, but thank you again for your prayers. And uh, let's keep working together to spread the gospel as far as possible. Thanks. You're welcome, thank you for all you've done. Uh, Ryan. We will have we'll organize this something better too. Send you. It is. We would love to, have to throw a huge party. That's. I would love that too. I'm not. I, do I, I don't know what we're going to do. Something. I don't know what. But I, okay. But I, God bless you. We're, we're coming to your apartment and we'll walk. Yeah, we're coming. Yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> uh, and the, finally, um, and this isn't so much for you as it is for the Sunday morning people. But next weekend, daylight saving time begins. Mm. So since the clocks don't move ahead until 2 a.m. Sunday morning. You guys don't have to worry about that. Come at the regular old time Saturday night. But should you wander in on Sunday, <laughs> let it not be an hour late. Good. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>